talk about the Emmet Poland trip, we're talking about a very unique type of program. In truth, when we go to Poland, we're, we're not just going to view what happened in the terms of the tragedies and the suffering of, of the Holocaust. We're really going to discover something much deeper. We're really trying to discover really what it means to, to be a Jew and what it means to live like a Jew. This discovery was not only for the students, but for the staff as well, and something that, um, that is a life-changing experience. You know, at, at Emmet, we're always trying to discover ways to inspire our students. And that's our mission, that, that's what we're here for. And we felt that the, a trip to Eastern Europe, and to Poland in particular, would be the way to do this. Say hi, sorry about that. Okay. Now, uh, this trip was a pioneering trip of sorts, and this was the first trip of its kind for Emmet. And uh, we were excited and nervous and anxious and uh, all things uh, you know, to, to get it done, to see how the students would appreciate it and uh, whether we would connect. The experiences I had on the Emmet Poland trip were really life-changing. I experienced things I could never have thought of and it's totally different when you see it in real life compared to as when you see it on paper or read about it or even just hearing about it. The trip that I went to with Emmet um, to Poland really changed my life and I'm not just saying that because you know everybody says it really was life-changing. Um, it changed the way that I view Judaism and it changed the way that I connect with Judaism. After that trip I decided to wear a kippah every day um, and since then I've been wearing a kippah every day. It was just like it was an emotional roller coaster. We went, we had ups, we had downs, we went from being at a children's memorial and everyone in tears to singing and dancing in the middle of the street in Poland. And so when the student comes with us on our journey, they're prepared for it. I think a lot of it had to do with the preparation that we had given the students uh, myself and Rabbi Kraft, we, uh, we, we gave 10 lectures over the span of a, of a semester to get them prepared um, and uh, get them excited and get them in the right perspective for what they were going to see. And we felt that the way to do this properly at Emmet, we feel that education is the, is the main way a person grows. And it wasn't supposed to just be a trip. What we wanted is that it should first be a learning experience where we study and we engage ourselves academically and intellectually. And from there, it culminates in this experience. We take them to Warsaw. We show them the, the, the places where Jews lived and we, we take them and we give them a, a history of what Jewish life was and, and who these great rabbis and thinkers were who so influenced our study today. The trip to Poland and to Germany changed the lives of not only our students, uh, I never would have thought that it would change my life as well, that I'm not the same person uh, before the trip as I am. I, I feel so much more motivated and so much closer to Hashem, closer to my family. In searching to understand the Holocaust and understand the death of, of six million, a number which we can barely comprehend and can't even think about, and each life is, is a world, bifne a world by itself, and we talk about six million, our minds really can't comprehend it. And yet we have to, we seek to, we look, and there's something inside of us that, that calls out, I want to know, I want to understand. I have one living relative on my mother's side, and uh, I had called him to find out some information. And he didn't share with me too much, but what he did share with me was the name of my great-grandparents. Uh, their names uh, were Reb Shmuel Zanvo, and the last name was Lieberman. And they shared with me the city in which they lived. It was at this time that Rabbi Delman was walking through this field and very emotional and lost in his thoughts and thinking. 
All I could remember saying to myself is, God, no, God, no, it can't be, it can't be, it can't be. <laughs> and all of a sudden, where we are, we hear a, 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 it was like a scream, a cry. And I see him, he's crying out of the field and he's, he's down on the ground. And, and I think, oh my gosh, what's happening? So I run out to him, and I grab him, and I, by the shoulder, I said, Duffet, what's, what's going on? What's the matter? He points to a sign, and he shows me, and I look at it, and it's a actual, it's a plaque. It's a plaque from a small town in Poland. And I start reading down the plaque, and what do I see? I start reading the names of his children. And he says, those are my grandparents and my great-grandparents. That was the town that they were from. We never knew what happened to them. Nobody knows. For 75 years, it's been a mystery. Where did they die? I found one Jew out of six million Jews that were murdered in the Holocaust. Hashem brought me to the grave of my great-grandparents. They were all perished. They had all perished here in Chelmno and that I was privileged to have my students there to, w to witness it as well. The most inspiring part, I think, was when Rabbi Dalman found that his family had been there and that was a memorial for him and he had never known that before. He'd never been to Poland before. You got to see it to believe it. When one walks around at the field, one notices small white stones. We asked the students to gather some of these. The students brought them back to us, and we said, take a look at the bottom, what do you see? And underneath we noticed that these, what appeared to be white stones were actually porous on the bottom. In fact, they weren't stones at all, they were bone. Nobody can explain it, but when it rains on these fields, the bones of close to a half a million Jews rises to the surface. And over the years, it's, it's, it appears like little white stones, but it's bone. We took a handful of these bones and we brought them to the side and we actually conducted a, a burial. We did a kvura, we did a Jewish burial. Maybe the bones we're bearing right now are the bones of Rabbi Delman's grandparents, great-grandparents. So that message of not just how they died, but how they lived, is really the message we're trying to convey to our students. The richness that was Jewish life before the war, the, the transmission that they must have received from their parents and generations before to live like that. This trip is not just about some historical context. This trip is about our families. Rabbi Delman found his family here. And it's a very personal, and I think that moment changed the trip uh, for our students. Just going there is really the only way that you can understand exactly what happened. And they come out still loving God, and that really hit home to me, that I should, you know, appreciate everything I have every single day. Every student that goes is touched by it, deeply and meaningfully. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to enable young Jews to realize how special they are, and the backdrop of Poland the backdrop of the glory of what Jewish history was and the tragedy of the last century is perhaps the most powerful place to make that happen and to awaken Jews to who they are. We have to realize that Jews are brothers and sisters and only when we unite and act in harmony with each other can we fulfill our noble and glorious purpose to bring the light of Hashem to the entire creation.